school board meeting for June 12, 2023. Thank you all for coming tonight. Please, if you have your telephones on, would you kind of turn them down a little bit, keep your conversations to yourself. And at this time, I would ask everyone to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time we'll have a roll call of those present, and in the absence of our secretary, we'll have our vice president, acting secretary, uh, Ryan Sieber. All right. Uh, Amy Jackson. Here. Justin Olmquist. Here. Jennifer Farley. Here. Rhonda Spence. Here. Ray Gillen. Not here. Ryan Seberg. Here. President Jim Arnold. Here. Six present, Six present, one Six present, one absent. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll begin with our uh, public comment. We have one public comment listed this evening. Uh, Mr. Kurt, if you want to come forward, please. Welcome tonight. Nice to see you again. You have three minutes. And uh, there's no questions or answers or anything like that, strictly a three-minute presentation. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming. Thank you for giving me the time, Mr. Arnold. Uh, I appeared last month, and I represent Preserve Historic Book Club. My name is Mark Kerr. Uh, we had extended an offer or, or made a suggestion at the last board meeting that we'd like to fund a feasibility study for Kiwanis and Schreiber field that would look at the possibility of upgrading those facilities, but keeping uh, the, the, uh, the, the historic facades and facilities intact. And so to that end, uh, we've secured an Ephraimson grant from Indiana Landmark that's a matching grant for $3,500. The balance of the, feasibility, the cost of the feasibility study, again, would be covered by uh, preserved historic Laporte and, and also from, from individual contributions. So there would be no expense uh, for the school board is an offer that we're making uh, and, and, and would fund uh, wholly. Uh, so in addition to that, we have a petition that has circulated with over 500 uh, signatures supporting uh, the initiative. So there seems to be community support for going forward, at least with the feasibility study. So I'm here tonight to request that the board uh, consider our offer and uh, give us uh, your support and a favorable response. We can't do this without uh, your consent and cooperation. So um, that's my request tonight. Thank you for the time. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next order of business with the consent agenda, but before we get into that, we have three items, three new addendum items to add tonight. Uh, the first one is a uh, add to our consent agenda. It could be a retirement, Ms. Uh, Helen Kramke, teacher in Indian Trails. If you would uh, take over that, it would be the add addendum typed out, present to you in the packet. The other two addendums we have will be under new business, uh, number five, a point five zero seven. Consideration for recommendation for the approval of stipends associated with the summer curriculum work. Dr. Tango will cover that. And item 5.08, consideration for recommendation for the approval of kindergarten countdown grant transfer. Also, Dr. Tango, I believe you'll speak on that as well. At this time, the board has had time to look over that. I to ask for a motion to present and hand those three items to our agenda tonight. So moved. Thank you, Vice President. Second. Second. Thank you, Jennifer. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Now that we have those added, we'll move on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> we have the minutes. Approval of the minutes for the May 8, 2023 school board meeting. Approval of the minutes for the June 1st, 2023 special executive session. Approval of the minutes of June 1st, 2020, the public hearing board meeting. Financials for ratification and approval from June 12, 2023. Treasurer's report for May 2023. Personal recommendations and travel requests for this month. 
all board members should have had those and received them plenty of time to go over and look at them. Are there any questions or comments that the board may have at this time? Seeing none, I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you, Amy. Approved by Amy. Motion by Amy. Second? Second. Second, Rhonda. Thank you. All those in favor, second for five, saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, board. That is now approved. We have no old business to discuss tonight in the reports. We're going to start out with the superintendent's report, Dr. Francis Coney. Thank you, President Arnold. We have uh, some exciting things uh, during my report tonight. First, some recognition of some employees that are returning next year in a new capacity that, uh, as of the last board meeting, we had a couple of important hires for the corporation. We wanted to highlight and introduce those uh, hires to the public here tonight. First, um, I'd like to ask Rob Richards to come forward, please. Rob? And your family, whoever's here with you. Thank you. Okay, I'll give you a little intro, Rob, and then uh, you can share some words with us. But we're really excited to have Rob here. Uh, Rob's going to be the director of special education next school year. Rob's been with us for a number of years and has extensive uh, background in special needs programming, um, and as, as well as been an assistant uh, director in the past, and so we're really happy, blessed to have him um, taking over the reins again, as we talked last time in, in the absence and, and the um, resignation of uh, Tara Reinhardt. So with that, Rob, if you could uh, introduce yourself to the board and who you brought with you tonight. Yeah. So I'm Rob Richards, and this is my wife, Tiffany, of uh, married 23 years, and my daughter, Carly, who is uh, freshly graduated from Plymouth High School a couple days ago, and my son, uh, Robbie Richards, um, who is uh, attending IUSB, uh, studying secondary ed biology. Uh, a couple more years ago, <laughs> Carly's going to start IUSB in the fall, studying speech language pathology, so you know, we're excited about that. Um, but I would like to uh, thank the LaPorte Community School Board uh, for this opportunity, as well as uh, Dr. Francisconi, Dr. Reinhardt, and our administrative team, uh, as well as the South LaPorte County uh, Special Ed Cooperative for this opportunity. I'm very honored and excited to uh, start a new chapter in my life. Um, just finished up my fifth year here in LaPorte as a direct or district supervisor, and um, I'm excited to, to start uh, the, the new chapter as director. and. Uh, uh, bring some uh, great things and great ideas and just continue all the wonderful things that have been going on in this uh, great uh, corporation and co-op. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I, I really appreciate it. I would thank add you, uh, you. to Rob, one of the things that uh, we'll find out quickly about Rob is that over the years I've watched him operate and you know none of the our leadership jobs are easy but it, especially in special needs programming a lot of challenges and I've never have seen him get rattled. He's always main, tries to maintain calm uh, approach to whether it's dealing with other staff members or certainly difficult situations with parents and children. We appreciate that. We look forward to uh, you applying that continuously. Uh, we'll try to keep you supported so you can keep that up. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Well, thank you. Continuing on with our recognitions tonight, uh, introducing, we'd like to introduce <coughs> Becky Jeffers to you in her new capacity. Becky, could you come up, please, along with family, friends, fans? <laughs> <laughs> so with that, uh, Becky Jeffers has also a familiar face. She's worked with us as the uh, Little Learners preschool principal for a number of years, has done a great job with that, also doubled as a supervisor for special needs programming. Um, she has done everything under the sun uh, in her capacity to continue to um, increase our programming, the uh, significance of our programming at the early childhood, in the early childhood area. And 
All the while throughout this year, we've been noticing the need to try to coordinate our early childhood programming curriculum. And uh, Becky has uh, made her interest known and we're very comfortable uh, that she's passionate about this. Uh, we can't wait for the next steps for the entire corporation. Uh, she'll continue to serve in the same capacity with Little Learners Preschool uh, because she honestly can't be replaced there at the job she's doing. But with that, uh, we'll, she'll also serve in some other capacities. We'll loosen up some responsibilities in other areas um, so that she can coordinate all of our pre-K programming here. And so with that, Becky, honored issue, and you can tell us who you brought with you tonight. Absolutely. So I'd like to start off by thanking the board administration, especially Dr. Condal, Dr. Reinhardt, for um, this opportunity honoring my passion for early childhood. Um, also my family. Um, we are all Slicers here. So my husband, Dan, is a teacher and coach at LaPorte High School. Um, our oldest, Audrey, much to the dismay of mom and dad, who are IU grads, um, she just finished her first year of the Boilermaker. All right. So I'm um, studying zoology. And then Elena is our youngest, and she will be entering the high school as a junior this year. So um, I started my career in LaPorte 21 years ago. And I've got two people that surprised me, Mrs. Raymond and Mrs. Clark. They were by my side 21 years ago at Park School. If you recall, Park was located where the flash pad is now for Bethany Lutheran. So um, at that time, I was hired on as a part-time teacher. We had two and a half classes designated for students with disabilities. And at that time, we had a state cap of eight students per classroom. So very small numbers. And we had one general education classroom, which Mrs. Raymond and Mrs. Clark taught. Um, fast forward 21 years, um, we now have 15 classrooms and approximately 400 students that we serve every year. So um, the fact that our corporation is recognizing the need to really put that focus on early childhood and giving me the opportunity to kind of spearhead that is very exciting. So again, I thank you for the opportunity and look forward to an exciting year. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations again to both of you. Look forward to working with you. We also have the elementary teacher of the year for LaPorte Community School Corporation. We're going to present her at this point. Actually, Dr. Tonigal is going to take it from here. Dr. Yeah. Tonigal? Yeah, well, as um, Mrs. Tallerson and Mrs. Shabel make their way up, I just will comment and say one of the most exciting times of the year was when our administration got to visit Critchfield and surprise Mrs. Tallerson and her class with this prestigious award of Teacher of the Year. And I will tell you, her students were so happy and so proud of her, just like we are. It was a really exciting moment. So, um, Mrs. Shabel, I'll introduce you as a principal of Critchfield, and I know you were really excited to have a Teacher of the Year in your awesome building, so congratulations, Mrs. Tallerson. You have family here, so I don't I know. Do. I do. I have my son, Will, who will be a junior at LaPorte High School. Can't believe it. And um, my husband is back there. He's hiding. <laughs> and Andrew. Oh. And so, yeah. anyway, um, it's quite an honor to be recognized for something that I love. Oh, absolutely so love doing. And um, just feel like, yeah, uh, it's, it's nice to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And I share it with so many of my colleagues because I have a fabulous kindergarten team. At with Mrs. Oh, very well deserved. We congratulate you. Yeah. So, Mr. Talich, I have a question for you. Who writes the movie reviews? Well, a little bit of both of them. Oh. <laughs> I just read two of them today. <laughs> So Alice will go on, on to represent us at the state level. Uh, that will be the next level of uh, judging that goes on, and we wish her the best. Okay. 
Dr. Tonegal, you want to talk about our next uh, presentation that we have? Yeah, so uh, board throughout this year, we've been spotlighting our schools and different initiatives, programs, uh, faces. And so tonight, I want to invite Holly Weierman to the front with her Lincoln team. So Holly is our principal at Lincoln Elementary, and she's going to spotlight some exciting happenings that are uh, occurring just a few blocks away. So Mrs. Weierman, bring your kiddos up, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, like Dr. Tonegal said, I'm Holly Weierman, principal of Lincoln, and I have quite a few of my Lincoln Lions here tonight. Um, and we want to talk to you about experiences. So to start it off, the big thing is here is pause. Positive attitude, accept responsibility, work together, and show respect is what we all do at Lincoln Elementary School daily. And in order to get us going, we need none other than Roxanna here to lead us in the K-Kids Pledge. Tell them what you have to do before we do the pledge. You have to stand up or anything? Yeah, you have to stand up and put three fingers up. Okay, you have to stand up. Three fingers up. Please stand up. Absolutely. As a K-Kid, I promise to serve my neighborhood and my school. I will show respect for my environment, and I will try to make the world a better place in which to live. So, Roxana, can you explain to us some things that we did with K-Kids this year? Um, some things we did, we helped So Lincoln Elementary School, we brought in a whole bunch of donations from all families and friends, and we made sure that the food boxes at the Civic and the library were filled at all times. Mm -hmm. So it was neat to be able, I think you guys went three times, mm -hmm. and filled them up three different times because we had so many different donations. So thank you, Roxanna. Um, we also had bicycle safety um, was a big experience for our um, Lincoln crew. NDOT came in and gave every kindergarten, first, and second grader a bike helmet so that we can do bike safety. And one thing that um, some of you may not know is we only have one bus for Lincoln Elementary School. So the majority of my students are walkers or their parents drop them off every single day. So one of the neatest experiences we've ever done is gone on a huge field trip. Um, and one of the things we went to last year was the Potawatomi Zoo and we got back and I said, you guys wanna go back to the zoo? And a lot of them just said, no, I wanna get back on the bus. <laughs> Take me on another ride, please. <laughs> so thanks to NDOT for um, providing us with bike helmets so that they can get um, to school in a different capacity. Um, this is the first year for a robotics club. Um, Manny was on the first team here at Lincoln Elementary School. What do you think? Can you tell us about what you did? You don't remember. They were at Kingsford Heights Elementary School. I believe there was, what, 32 teams? 32 teams and came in, I believe, 11th or 12th, the first team did. So that was pretty neat to have our first ever robotics club. Um, of course, Katie Talbert um, is our leader of robotics club, and we had a great first year. A lot of these kids are also um, going to go to Kathleen and continue on with the robotics club. Uh, we also have family game night at Lincoln. Um, we did kind of, we had some fun here. We bought a whole bunch of brand new fly swatters that had phonics games. Um, you put a bunch of sight words down or discovery words from Kendor, um, and you yell, somebody's in charge, and you say out the word, whatever the word may be, and some, everybody has to hit it first. Whoever gets it gets the point. So it was a lot of fun to have a lot of phonics games um, and play with um, our families and have everybody invited. For afternoon, Mrs. Amor. She holds this um, title of Crafternoon once a month. We have a craft experience where anywhere between 50 and 100 students um, show up after school and we do a craft. Normally in January, it is a game, a board game of some choice. Most of the time it's from a different country um, and we have to learn how to say that name um, and learn how to play that game. So a whole bunch of staff and students, they come to school after, or stay after school. We put these board games together and play games. Um, so it's a lot of fun. These are just a few of them. Uh, pictures that are on here. Next up is another, it's called Artists in Residence that Mrs. Amor does. Brooklyn and Jaslyn here um, have some of their artwork that they would like to walk around and show you all. Walk around 
Right. Walk around in
get all part of it. Mom can stand up so you can get a better picture. There. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Get a good picture. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, John, Ms. McClain. We have another recognition or acceptance, I should say, a little bit of both. Uh, Dr. Reinhardt, would you like to take us sure. from here? Yeah, actually, I'm going to have Rob come up and Tom. Do you want to bring a sample? Well, you're going to have to help me again with your last name. Best Rocket. You got that? <laughs> um, Tom has been a, a huge supporter of our special ed programming, particularly our life skills programming. Over many years, he's given uh, several donations over the years uh, to help uh, with, with funding to, for supplies and materials, but he's also uh, given many free breakfasts for our life skills uh, elementary programs that have come, free pancake and sausage breakfast. Um, and so it's always been a nice treat each year for them to, uh, for our classes to engage in those uh, community outings. And so we just really appreciate everything that you've done for the co-op and done for kids. and. Uh, Louis Little Angels Fund. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you so, very much. So, if you wanted to maybe give a little history on that, and because uh, sure. I know it's been around a lot longer than I have. So. <laughs> yeah, my uh, dad came to town here in '77, and uh, we were at uh, had Louis Family Restaurant where Christos is now, and uh, we had a couple of restaurants. The the cafe at, uh, that we just closed was at on, on East Lincoln Way where uh, Ace uh, Hardware is. We moved in 1985 to current location, and uh, I've been with them ever since. I started when I was 14, and I just turned 60, so I decided to retire this year <laughs> and uh, to go on to some other opportunities. And I appreciate the recognition, and uh, thank you very much for letting me be part of the community and your, and your school system. I appreciate it. We have one more check for you, oh. and uh, we have a check here for uh, the last check. This is from January to, I think, May, is uh, $1,359 to give to the, to the uh, South LaPorte County Special Co-op. Thank you. Okay, Chris. Yeah, Rob, you're in there. Wait, sign the check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, introduce your family. Yes, hi, that's my wife, Diana. We just got married three weeks ago. Oh, and this is my sister, Miriam, and her husband, Bill. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Continuing on with my report. <coughs> Touch base on a couple things real quickly. Uh, last week, we capped off the school year with a successful graduation ceremony at Kiwanis Field. We had a beautiful evening. Uh, students did a great job. The speakers were terrific. Uh, so thanks to all them, and, and congratulations to Scott Up and his crew um, for what was a successful ceremony. Just a little bit of a recap on the students that graduated. We had 30, 392 graduates this year. And we typically highlight a lot of cords, a lot of different uh, adornments in the ceremony, but uh, some of the um, most prestigious were the fact that we had 21 4.0 students in that graduating class, which is a good number. And then we had three AP capstone diplomas, that, um, and I think that's the first mm -hmm. that we had that many. So um, a great class. We're looking forward to um, monitoring their success in the future and hopefully getting a few of them back here in the port so we can con continue uh, to attract and retain uh, our local students and, and invest, who invest, continue to invest in our community for that matter. So um, graduation recap. And then lastly, strategic planning. I've been talking a lot about strategic planning this year. Um, 
I think one of the things we see when we go through a planning process and collect information from the from the community is that when we go to put this together, you want to be able to simplify how it is that presentations and some of the activities that you see going on at Lincoln and some of the other things that we're recognizing here fit into a larger plan. And I think um, it's there are a lot of good things already going on, which we part of this process was to look at those and say, okay, how is it that the K clubs at K club kids at Lincoln fits in with the larger plan, right? And so I, we can say that a couple ways. First of all, we have three main domains right now, and we're going to have three focus areas in our strategic plan. So they all fit within those. We're looking to continue these, weed out ones that don't fit within our plan, but also as well add to those over the next three to five years. But when you start talking about what we just heard tonight was that they were talking about how their, their PAWS program, they're going to be good neighbors, they're going to treat each other with respect, they're going to help the community. All these things have to do with safety in the building. They had uh, NDOT with the bike safety, right? So it's safety in the building, which is one of our main domains. Parent community engagement, they're working, they're, they're working with the community and um, putting on food drives and so forth. And as well, coordinating and engaging with Kiwanis, which is a, a service club in Laporte. Again, hit, you're hitting all, all facets there. And certainly when you're talking about just the curriculum that goes on is, is guaranteed and viable. And so uh, all those things fit closely. And I, I don't think that um, we don't recognize them enough because there's a lot more going on in schools and there's a lot more to life than just simply the academic part. Um, and we continue to uh, excel in those areas in Laporte and we're going to continue to grow in those because you can see the energy on the kids and the excitement in the kids' faces. Not to say they don't get excited about math and science, but um, certainly some students do, but many of them, uh, these types of things are the things that keep them coming to school every day. So we're really excited to continue to uh, grow and, and unveil our plan, which is going to show a process for working through these things in the future over the next three to five years. Next step is that we're going to meet with all of our um, leaders that are going to lead different areas within a strategic plan, and certainly looking forward to end of the month with a board retreat where we can kind of unveil the steps that are going to go over on the next three to five years before we unveil that to the community. So thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Francisconi. Any members of the board have anything, questions or comments for Dr. Francisconi? Seeing none, we'll move on to our next report. Uh, Dr. Tynigal. All right, good evening. I've got two items that I want to share with you tonight. The first is in staff and parent community engagement. Um, in May, the Indiana Department of Education announced that Kingsford Heights was being recognized as a school that is developing their STEM certification. So they did not receive full certification, but they are on the pathway to being fully certified. There are very few schools in LaPorte County and even in this region that are STEM certified. We're fortunate enough that Critchfield Elementary is one that's fully certified and they will be going through um, their recertification process next year. Kingsford Heights has been working on this for a few years. It's a lot of time, a lot of dedication. It's a very rigorous um, application process. And so I want to congratulate Mrs. Kozier on that journey. What they're going to do now is take the scores from their rubric, look at them, find areas that need improvement. They're going to visit some other schools, look at the applications of exemplar schools, and then fine uh, tune those areas that need to be beefed up and get their scores up and then reapply, I believe, uh, this fall. So I want to congratulate them on that commitment to integrating STEM into uh, their school. Secondly, I want to give the board an update on our textbook adoption process. Throughout this whole second semester, um, Dr. Larson and I have uh, mentioned that we're going through the process of textbook adoption. You know, early on, we didn't know what would happen with state legislation, but we felt strongly at the beginning we needed to follow a process, and so we had committees. We got involved with uh, Northern Indiana Educational Service Center, um, we reviewed and looked at lots of different textbooks and just went through that process, uh, not knowing how the money situation would play out at the state level. But where we've landed is we've, we've had our display cases up here. Our schools have put in their newsletters, um, inviting parents, community members who want to look at our curriculum to come in. We've had a handful of parents that have come in and looked at the curriculum. And so we are going to not do a full adoption. We are going to just have a one-year adoption. We're doing a grades K through two adoption and then a grades three, four adoption at the elementary level. And we're doing that because we don't want to commit long-term to anything with the financial situation being 
kind of unstable. Um, we want to just kind of wait and see how this how this plays out. Um, science um, curriculum is very important to the district, and so we have some new standards that are happening at the state level, including new computer science standards. So we're going to continue to go through the curriculum mapping process. Our STEM schools heavily rely upon our STEM um, curriculum. So um, that is not a fee. You know, parents don't pay for that anymore, so really there's no board action. I just wanted to give the board an update on where we are at with that. And uh, Those two resources are Discovery Education, uh, Indiana Science, and then Scholastic um, for our early primary grades. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Doctor. Any questions for Dr. Tonego? I have a question. Uh, the, so you said a one-year adoption. Are we, are we buying books? One year so K one network. and two is a physical adoption of of Scholastic magazine, so they'll get that regularly. We will be uh, purchasing digital content for grades okay. three, four, and it's a one year purchase. So yeah. you just have a subscription, basically. Yeah. We did not opt into getting all the the hard copies and you know, okay. all the different supplemental materials. We're just going to, going to go pretty simple Excellent. in this one year, and then kind of see how it goes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Grade five three is online curriculum as well, and then they have a consumable textbook. Um, that they use in labs and other um, work. So that will be for one year, and then we'll see what the state does with what's on their website gotcha. after that. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Dr. Tonico. Thank you. Dr. Larson. Thank you. Um, just again, a recap of the year. I had a great graduation last week, and then we also started last Monday with summer school which is both in-person and virtual at the high school and at the intermediate campus. We're very fortunate to be able to provide um, bus transportation for our students and appreciate that being offered. Um, we also have the Boys and Girls Club that is um, servicing students at the Kessling Intermediate Campus, and so that is going very well also. Um, and then if you were past the high school today, you may have seen a lot of students out on the baseball field. We've started our summer camps, so um, it is never quiet around the high school or the intermediate campus during the summer, so there are a lot of things going on. Um, and the schools did just have their end-of-year celebrations, and um, we're able to do a lot of transitioning for eighth graders going into high school. We took our eighth graders over on buses to the high school, let them walk around um, so that they are a little more familiar. And then also this year, um, new for the 5-6, they took 6th graders over to the 7th, 8th, to the middle school to um, have them be familiar as well. So um, hopefully getting ready for a great school year next year. Um, I will add one piece of information just to the board <coughs> on financial literacy. That's been an important topic. Um, at the state level and with the new house bills requiring financial literacy and at the high school this year that um, became a requirement for all junior students to um, sign up for that semester course that's being taught through our business department um, if for some reason um, it, parents want to have their child opt out of that course they can um, do that in writing um, to opt them out, but I believe we have um, close to 85% of our students in their junior year, and one of the opt-outs might just be because of their other electives that it's difficult for them to schedule into that course, but um, we're not getting any responses of people not wanting their child to have financial literacy. But um, we are addressing that as a district, and, and I'm proud of the work that <coughs> Mr. Rupp and his team have done to make that happen for the fall. So that's all for my report, so thank you. Question for Dr. Larson. Okay, Assistant Superintendent of Business Operations, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, President Arnold. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Dave Merkel from <coughs> Danielson to come forward and uh, to get his presentation set up. Uh, there were another item this evening, in addition to an update on the transportation centers, I wanted to give the board kind of an update or an overview of what's happening currently in the corporation uh, as we prepare for a new school year, the 23-24 school year. Um, we have summer feeding going on right now in a number of our facilities, which is exciting. With summer school, in addition to... Um, 
the other programs going on there, which is uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, so that's been a real success. And again, it's a number of different sites. I commend uh, Cindy Vonder and her team um, in being able to feed the community. Uh, there's professional development going on tomorrow with our custodial staff at the Kesslin campus, which is exciting. Uh, there'll be um, some different professional development opportunities for our utility, maintenance, and custodial uh, staff. Uh, so again, looking forward to that. I commend uh, Ryan Keim and his team for setting that up and, and look forward to hearing some of the, of the updates from that professional development that, again, is taking place tomorrow at Kesslin campus. Uh, improvements to the schools. Uh, two different elementary schools are going to get a little bit of upgrade to their cafeterias, which is exciting. Kingsbury Elementary being one of them with some painting that's been done. Uh, and again, Cindy Vonder and, and her team with the food service department uh, are going to be able to uh, spruce up that, that cafeteria a little bit more, which again, looking forward to that. And, and Riley is another one that, that uh, again, will be uh, some updates in, inside that cafeteria, which includes actually new uh, cafeteria tables, which have not been replaced since 1997. So again, looking forward to that um, and, and appreciate the fact that our food service department or child nutrition department is able to fund those particular initiatives uh, and going forward. Uh, we have carpet going in. You approved this formally uh, in, in, in a former board meeting, the uh, carpet project at Indian Trail. So that will again, be starting up here very, very shortly. And, and again, look forward to that completion before the school year starts. Uh, Critchfield has a lot going on. Um, we have the parking lot and traffic flow project that is going to begin here shortly. And they obviously have the HVAC projects currently going on. Again, those are ESSER funded projects. Uh, so that will be taking place. Um, in addition to the high school parking lot project, again, that really consists of the walking paths or the sidewalks that were not completed last year, uh, in addition to those parking lot lights and looking forward again to that completion. Um, and then the natatorium uh, HVAC project continues and will be finished before the end of the summer. So a lot going on in a number of our different facilities. Again, uh, grateful for the opportunity for us to continue to, to update those facilities. And we'll get into that a little bit later on with that, uh, in the 1028 hearing, we'll get into the explanation of some of those other future projects that we're going to have. But at this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dave Merkel to give us an update on the Transportation Center. Thank you very much. Uh, again, thank you for uh, the opportunity to update you, and as well as, of course, thank you for the work itself and your, the trust you put in the, uh, the, your construction manager and constructor. So, uh, I don't want this one. Uh, Visited site today, and it's a very it's a bevy of activity out there right now. Uh, site concrete work is wrapping up. There'll probably be a couple more days this week, and all the site concrete will be poured. Uh, so some pictures here showing ongoing site work. You can site concrete. You can see the the uh, pads and sidewalks and and those around the building. Uh, the concrete aprons are ongoing, and this, uh, this afternoon when I was out, they were actually pouring the uh, the aprons, the drive aprons, into the vehicle storage building. Uh, the uh, islands for the uh, uh, the for the fuel islands were were poured this morning. This picture was a little before I got there, um, and you can see stone is going down. I'd say it's about a third down the stone base is about a third down on the uh, uh, bus uh, parking area and the, the rest of it's graded obviously we've had great weather um, inside the building you see the vehicle service bays are just about complete uh, and I believe you've got uh, the corporation will be moving their lift in either sometime this week or next week um, the stairs, handrails, and guardrails around the mezzanine are installed and painted. And you can see the hose reels for the vehicle exhaust system. Inside the office is just about coming. I, I didn't take the full tour in because I didn't want to put track any more dust in there than I needed to when I was out today. But you can see the pictures are uh, we're we're in a good place in that we're kind of ahead of uh, the 
usual craziness as it gets with school constructions and flooring contractors are usually at the end of the season, everybody's fighting to get the flooring contractors out there. And it's good that our floor is pretty much down here at the beginning of the, let's say the summer silly season. So you can see they were actually starting base today. We just turned school projects over before they didn't have base down yet because of the way it gets at the end of the summer. So you know, it's great that kind of this project's coming in when it is. And just a few more pictures from the inside. You can see work continues. The LBT is down, LBT and the BCT is all down. Understand you're going to start moving furniture in next week. So uh, this week, there's a lot of stone going down um, uh, and being placed. Uh, asphalt should start getting placed next week on the lots. Utilities along Stevens Road will continue. Right now, we're just waiting for Frontier to get out of the way. Uh, they're pretty close to, uh, to completing. We believe Frontier will be complete tomorrow, if not the next day, with the relocation of the fiber optic line that's kind of uh, it's a little stymie on Stevens Road. Uh, we'll continue to install the rest of the carpet and flooring and base in the office. The building will be clean and ready for the owner to move your furniture in on Monday, June 19th. Uh, site concrete work, bollards, and asphalt will also continue. Uh, we should have no issue making the substantial completion date of July 31st, and I would imagine we'll beat that by at least a couple weeks to uh, be out of there. Um, one thing I didn't, I wrote a note, but uh, NIPSCO, it, we, we're just about ready for NIPSCO. We've been promised that NIPSCO will be out uh, end of this week or early next week with permanent power. So things around in shape, it's, it's good to be kind of oh, not quite the stress, finishing up the stress as the buses are on their way at the end of the summer. So, you know, yeah. Any questions? Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Yeah, to mention it, and things are going again, like Dave said, really, really quickly. Uh -huh. The parking lot lights, I saw the beginning of that, and then some parts towards the end of the week, and they were all, they were all there in place. The electrical for the buses is, is in place. And so, again, things are happening real quickly. And like Dave said, we have our furniture being delivered, uh, set up for the 19th, and so start to move that in. That's again, like I said, the uh, the lift is coming in as well. So it is exciting the fact that we're not stressing out to make sure that the facility is going to be up and ready to go. For the beginning of the school year, we have you know a few weeks in which to make sure we're all established uh, for the beginning of that school year. So again, I, I commend uh, Larson Danielson and the work that they've done as well as our architects and our maintenance and, and bus crew, uh, again, for making sure that those things are gonna be ready to go to start a 23, 24 school year. So thank you, appreciate it. Concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Any questions for Mr. Hunt? Thank you. We move on to new business. <clears throat> First one in the harder years is the consideration for recommendation to approve the acceptance of grants, donations, and gifts and requests. Dr. Francis Coney. Thank you. We continue to be the beneficiaries of grant money and community money coming in to help support our programs. Uh, this month, we have donation of $1,000 from Horizon Bank for our Slicer Champions program, um, a mentoring program that's been successful at the high school. Uh, the Wrestling Association donated $16,000 some odd dollars to LaPorte High School Athletic Department for the purchase of uh, specific competition wrestling mats, for that matter. Uh, we also had a donation of $2,000 from Northwest Indiana Area Health Education Center, and that goes to our host of program or our Health Occupation Student Association for the purchase of CNA supplies. So we're excited about that. That's a program that's up and coming for us. Um, and then lastly, I would like to add the donation from Louis tonight that uh, was just presented to us. It's not on the docket here, but we can uh, make a note that it's $1,359 uh, from Louis to our South Laporte Special Education Cooperative. So those are in front of you tonight for acceptance. Thank you, Doctor. Lord, you've heard the uh, donations, requests, requests, and so forth. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, I would accept the motion to uh, accept. So moved. Thank you, Justin. Second? Second. 
Thank you, Jennifer. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next order of business, consideration for the recommendation of the approval of purchase of soccer goals using BSN rewards. Dr. Tonico. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Uh, in front of you is a request to approve the purchase of soccer goals using our BSN uh, reward dollars. We have a, a retail agreement with BSN that uh, provides uh, rebates, um, discounts, and then reward dollars. And so we're fortunate enough to be able to use uh, the rewards to purchase uh, department equipment and offsets the cost of other things that occur in the department. So in front of you is uh, the price of those soccer goals, I believe just under $11,000. So it's a, a considerable amount of money that we are saving by partnering with BSN. Um, just for fun too, I threw in the FAQ document that I created several years ago for um, the old board that had lots of questions on the BSN agreement. This is a good example of one of the benefits that we have by partnering with them. Um, but a lot of the questions that come up, I try to document in that FAQ document, but I'd be glad to answer any other questions about either the agreement or this purchase. Thank you, Doctor. I'd just like to, to tell some of the new members of the board that a couple years ago we had questions about that, and that we got, got a little bit of exchange before the board. It was a good exchange, but uh, I think this is just a, a premier example of by this company and getting that rewards program has paid off because of the money credit that we've gotten back from buying from them that's going towards building we have to have use school funding for. Correct. Right. This was a, a point of contention a couple of years ago. I'm glad we got it straightened out and we commend you. I think that's that's a great venture. Any questions from the board comments? Hearing that I accept the motion to pass. So moved. Um, thank you, Ryan. Second, thank you, Amy. Motion is second been received. All in favor second five are saying aye. 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 Opposed? You? Thank you. Thank you. Consideration for the recommendation to approve the proposed contract of employment for the superintendent of schools. Mr. Kaminsky. Yes, um, board, the, um, we followed the statutory process for uh, advertising the superintendent's contract. We held a public meeting, uh, public hearing at the last board meeting, and now it's up for your consideration. Thank you very much. The board had uh, plenty of time. We had this proposed to us to study. We had a hearing on the contract on June 1st uh, for public comment as well as board comment. So tonight we're up to uh, for, for a vote. Do you have any comments, questions from the board? Yeah. I'd like to make a comment. So for four of us, this is our sixth meeting. We've been doing this now for six months. And uh, personally, I was committed to um, listening, learning, um, making relationships. Um, I went on 26 visits with, with all of you and, and a lot of others. Um, I've read to kids. I handed out diplomas, which was awesome. Um, and I delivered donuts with the, uh, the current board members. Um, but after six months, two things became very clear to me. Uh, Mark, you got a hard job. A superintendent of schools is a hard job. Um, something else became very clear to me, too, is that I'm very excited. Um, I'm excited about the work that we can do together um, to make our schools better for our kids. Um, I'm excited to see and I expect bold action. I'm excited to see and I uh, expect progress. And I'm excited to see and I expect strong leadership. And so I am going to be a confident yes vote. Um, and I'm excited to see the great things that we can all do together. Thank you, Mike President Seabrook, and I totally echo your agreement and your sentiments as well. Uh, any comments from the other board? Yeah, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, hearing none, I would accept a motion for approval of the superintendent's new contract. So moved. So moved. Thank you. Vice President Seabrook, second? Second. Second, Jennifer. Thank you. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Congratulations, Doctor. You're, Thank you. you're Thank good you. for another year. <laughs> Thank you for supporting uh, the words. Just uh, doesn't need to be said, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. You know, certainly this is uh, what we accomplish is a, a lot more than about me. Um, it's about us, and it's about us as far as how we're working together, looking forward to strategic plan and being very clear about what we're going to be taking on, how we're going to need to work together to make the feasibility of those things happen. But again, I have an administrative team that helps, keeps me 
on my toes, uh, challenges me, challenges each other. Um, love working with them, and um, it's my honor to serve. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to uh, 0.504 now. We have a uh, joint 1028 appropriation hearing and consideration for recommendation to approve a 1028 resolution, appropriation resolution, and bond resolution for the Port Community School System. Mr. Hunt. President Arnold, I appreciate the opportunity this evening. Um, as I have representatives, which is our financial advisor, which is Baker Tilly, and that is Lindsay Simonetto, and she'll be presenting and basically being able to inform the board of the impact of tax rates. Um, again, as we go forward with, with looking at uh, this 1028 hearing and additional appropriations and the bond resolution. Uh, and also we have Jimmy Shanahan from Taft Law, who is our bond counsel, uh, who will speak briefly on what is uh, in front of you as far as those resolutions, what it means uh, as we go forward. But before I, I ask Lindsay to, to come forward with her presentation, uh, I kind of wanted to inform the board is it's kind of it's a little bit different this year. Normally we wouldn't do something this, I think this quickly. Uh, normally we would hold off to closer to the fall when we get a better sense of our assessed valuation and where we would go forward as far as um, issuing our GO bonds for capital improvements to our building. Um, but just to give again a background for some of you that are new, this is your first time being part of this 1028 hearing and understanding what this is all about. Uh, back in 2020, um, we had Schmidt Associates do a facility, a study on all of our, our facilities in the corporation. And through that study, they were able to identify uh, certain needs that we had uh, from a facility standpoint, whether it be some of the aging parts of the building or whether it be the safety or uh, an efficiency, uh, technology, uh, so there's a number of different things that, again, that they had categorized it as far as needs that we have for a corporation. So what we have done over the last few years is because of our operations fund not being able to really um, support, if you will, financially, some of these improvements, we're able to issue general obligation bonds. Just a perfect example is one that I mentioned this evening, which was the parking lot improvements at both Critchfield and, and the high school. That would be an example of, of those improvements. But getting back to why this is a little bit different this evening, uh, and I want to stress this, there was some changes in legislation that happened, and I had mentioned this on several occasions. Uh, this became more of a surprise, and this particular um, legislation that was passed, uh, we were preparing for it up front, and I was prepared to the, have the board uh, be a part of the discussion as where we are going to go forward is what we're going to be discussing this evening. Um, with the possibility because of the tax rate and the impact of the tax rates. Um, and I know that both Lindsay and, and Jimmy would be speaking towards this as well, and they will be speaking towards this. Uh, but the way that the legislation was passed is currently our tax rate uh, for our debt service. Uh, again, when we talk about the tax rate, we're talking about the property taxes that we have coming in to pay off of our debts uh, in our debt service. Uh, we're currently at 44 cents. Um, per $100 of assessed valuation. But with a state statute and what the, what the limitations are is, is if you go forward, if you have anything 40 cents and above, you're subject to a petition for remonstrance for remonstrance period, which can slow the period down or slow the process of, uh, again, moving forward with issuing uh, general obligations for the, again, the improvements of our school corporation. So what we're doing this evening is this. What we've calculated out is what the maximum capacity is for our general obligation bonds, is what we can issue. And so what I want to stress this evening, we are not issuing bonds. That's not what we're approving this evening. We're approving the amount that we can issue. Uh, and that would be through, again, our 1028 hearing in that additional appropriation and the bond resolution. The reason we're doing this is because by statute, the starting point of, of this new legislation is July 1 of 2023, which is coming up here very, very shortly. <coughs> what this allows us to do as, as a school corporation or as a board is be able to then, we, we um, are really honing in on that capacity so going forward we do not have to go back and again have an additional 1028 hearings 
which again, we would be subject to that petition or remonstrance period with the new legislation. That does not mean that we are necessarily going to issue all $8.19 million of capacity that we currently have. And again, that's a conservative estimate because that is basically looking at it again, Lindsay, I'm not trying to steal your thunder in your presentation, but that basically means that if the AV were to stay as is, that's what we would be able to issue. Now, the possibility is our assessed valuation increases and we can go back and again, issue additional amounts if need be or structure it differently. So this evening, like I said, I'm going to ask Lindsay Simonetto from Baker Tilly, our financial advisor, to come forward and talk about some of these things that impact and give the board some different options as we move forward. Because what we're going to do is if we're going to issue some general obligation bond, we would issue it more in the fall, especially probably around the September time when we start to get a real sense of our assessed valuation and it really is more solidified. And again, that allows us the opportunity in which to move forward. But as we look to issue general obligation bonds, and again, for the improvements of our facilities, again, by waiting, we can, we can, again, we can structure it in a way that would be advantageous for the poor community school corporation. At this time, I'm just going to ask Lindsay if she would come forward. Hard copies. I think I might be one copy short here. And while she's doing that, I also want to make sure that the board is aware of this and it's part of your packet. It's to understand that legally we have to advertise for the hearing this evening, this 1028 hearing or joint hearing and additional appropriation that is done. You will see the proof of publication within your packet. So that's totally speaking, making sure that we have legally advertised properly. We have, so I want to make sure that the board is aware of that. Good evening. So as Mr. Hunt mentioned, really this, what we get into, part of the purpose of tonight's meeting is to set maximum parameters. So these are maximums that you can come down from, but you can't exceed. So really what this does is outline, we'll get into some more detail, but it outlines a few different illustrations of different strategies, tax rate strategies you might look at as we move down the path to actually issue bonds. You don't need to make any decisions as far as the strategy of the repayment structure on the bonds. That's really going to depend upon the assessed valuation, as Mr. Hunt mentioned, that we'll hear, that we'll get later on in the fall, also dependent upon how much you end up borrowing at that period of time based on scope of project and all of that. So, but this does give you a picture based on where we sit today with current assessed valuation, if you were to borrow the full 8.19 million. So please feel free to ask questions along the way as we get into it. So on slide two here, we have a picture of all the bonds that you currently have outstanding. So the bars represent the annual payments on each of the six different financings that you have outstanding. If you look in 2023, those payments total a little over $8 million. And then those payments step down a little bit in 2024. And then you see another stair step down in 2025. And you see a few more of those throughout the life of these bonds. And then they fully mature. All of them are paid off at the end of 2037. Anytime you see those step downs in payments, really what that means is it does create an opportunity to address additional needs by doing another borrowing while still maintaining the tax rate. And I know that's been a goal in the past to really keep that tax rate more status quo. So as you look at that structure, when you see those step downs, those are what I call opportunity years or years of flexibility where you could pursue another project while still maintaining a tax rate. On slide three here, we have a calculation of your general obligation bonding capacity. 
So as Mr. Hunt mentioned, this is a proposal to do general obligation bonds, which means um, bonds that are issued in the name of a school corporation. Every taxing unit in the state of Indiana has a limitation to how much general obligation bonds they're allowed to issue, and it's tied to the assessed valuation. So it's a formula that's calculated on this schedule of 2% of one third of the assessed value. So based on your current assessed value, your overall general obligation limitation is the $11,875,000 figure. But then we've backed out, you have a few different general obligation bond issues outstanding. So the current balance, principal balance on each of those gets backed out. So your capacity today is just over six million, about six million ninety-five thousand dollars. However, as you make payments on your existing general obligation bonds every six months, you continue to increase the amount of capacity that is available um, for borrowing as you pay those down, and that's what we've shown on this next slide here. Yes. Yes. Answer the question. So at the bottom of this, it says that the assessed value of the school corporation is $3.1 billion per the LaPorte County's auditor's office. That's quite a bit off of the one point seven at the top. So what's the what's the what's delta the there? Yeah. yeah, good question. So um, the $1.78 billion figure is your net assessed value. So that's really your taxable value. That's okay. the amount of assessed value that you can actually, that you ta tax your tax rates on. And the $3.1 billion figure is your gross assessed value. That's before taking account into account any deductions. So the biggest deductions that you often see are with homestead properties. So people's primary residence, they might have a gross assessed value of $100,000, but after taking into account the homestead deductions that they're eligible for, they actually pay taxes on something like $33,000. So is the, is the 1.78 and the 3.1, are those the same years? Like They are the same years. Okay. It's that the 3.1 is... I would look at it as kind of market value, overall market value of all the properties in your district boundaries. But because of all those deductions that the properties get, the amount of value that actually gets taxed on is 1.7 million okay, per billion. You. And the reason we have that figure on there in the footnote is because different assessed valuations are looked at for different different pieces of the puzzle. So the $1.78 billion figure, the, the net assessed value is what we look at for purposes of general obligation capacity, but there's a gross assessed value that we would look at if we're considering different project thresholds and things like that. So um, that's really why that's in there in the footnote. Thank you. So as you continue to pay down the existing general obligation bonds over time each each time you make a payment every six months that those principal balances decrease which is actually then increases your available bonding capacity which is in the far right column of the schedule so one thing with this proposed legislation that that was outlined is the way it reads right now is that it has a sunset date at the end of 2024. Um, so what we've done here with the $8.19 million borrowing being proposed, we've looked at, at the end of 2024, what is that general obligation bonding capacity at that time? And that's the $8.19 million figure. And so that's what is being set really as the maximum borrowing amount um, for purposes of tonight. And so as we've put the, the different illustrations together here, which we'll walk through, we've assumed this $8.19 million borrowing. Certainly that's a maximum. More than likely, if you even were, if you were to issue that full amount, you would issue it over at least a couple of years. It wouldn't be done all at once. 
Um, and, and as Mr. Hunt also mentioned, really waiting until the fall to have your assessed valuation, have the most information that you can on hand to help really target the tax rate that you want to target. So the illustrations that we have shown here are really three different strategies that you could consider as we move forward with these bond issues. So um, again, no decision being made as far as which strategy you need you would, might want to pursue. Just something to be thinking about in the back of your mind um, as ultimately if you decide to move forward over the next several months. So this summary here is it's, it's a lot of numbers and I think it's helpful to have the summary of the pertinent financial information here, but I think what I really want to walk through is each individual illustration on the graph because I think that they demonstrate it better. So this graph here of illustration A, the gray bars, those represent all the bonds that you have outstanding. So that's the graph that we already went through, all of the existing bonds. The blue bars represent the proposed $8.19 million financing. And then if you look at the navy blue line, that represents the estimated debt service tax rate. So under this illustration, what's happening here is this is a, assuming if you wanted to get that debt service tax rate below that 40 cent level, that the way, as a reminder, the way the legislation reads right now, if you have a debt service tax rate at 40 cents or above, every project you pursue is subject to that petition or remonstrance process. So if you wanted to get the rate below that 40 cent level, then you would really have to extend the repayment term on the financing in order to have a lower annual payment um, and, and ultimately under this scenario here, with no assessed valuation growth, the other thing that I want to mention, we're using very conservative interest rates in this analysis as well, again, because of setting those maximum parameters. So keep all that in mind that it's intended to be conservative and, and paint more of a worst case scenario. But under those assumptions, if you wanted to get that tax rate down to the 40 cent level as soon as next year, really you would have a repayment term of about 14 years or so and that's what's being illustrated on this slide any questions on that so this is based on 5.5 percent interest i saw what what is kind of the going right now so today if the bonds were to sell we would expect more in the four percent range probably a little bit under four percent so there's intended there's at least 150 basis points okay. of cushion built in So comparing that to illustration B, under this scenario, we assume that you keep your debt service tax rate at the 44 cent level for the next couple years, and then try to drop it back down under the 40 cent starting with 2026. As I mentioned before, the way the legislation reads right now, it does have a sunset date. So this would essentially, you'd keep it at your debt service tax rate at the current level um, through the sunset, and then it would, this would give you an opportunity to kind of reevaluate again. Did they let it expire in sunset? Did they, did they extend it? Um, what might have happened there? So this gives you that flexibility with that step down in payment out there in 2026. Um, you could kind of reevaluate. Do you want to keep your tax rate up? Continue to keep it at the 44 cents. Do you have another project at that point that you might want to pursue? That gives you that that additional flexibility there. But because you are able to keep your debt service tax rate up at the 44 cent level for 2024 and 2025, you're able to accelerate some of the repayments which ultimately saves overall interest costs. Um, this also is showing a repayment term of a few years shorter, about 11 years. Any questions on that one? So 
you can you can push the rate so the point four four you can push that out beyond the um, the sunset if you do it now if I'm, if I'm understanding this right so like you could did you say the sunset was in 2024? The sunset is the yes, the end of 2024. Okay, but here we show the rate going out to 2025, right? So, so because we started now, we could push it out beyond that sunset. And date. that's part of why you're, you're looking at possibly pursuing the 8.19 million because that's intended to be um, more projects so that you don't have to come back next year and seek approval again. Uh, you've already gotten the approval to get ahead of the grandfathering date. Um, but then if you, with the sunset, if you were to pursue a project in 2025, do another hearing in 2025 for a completely different project, if that sunset occurs, then it doesn't really matter necessarily what your tax rate is. But if they extend that, then you might at that point be looking to do you want to reduce your tax rate? What do you want to do at that point? Do you want to subject yourself to the additional process? You can have those questions. I may have another question in the next slide, so go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Good. I know I appreciate it. So then on this illustration C, what we've demonstrated here is say you're just going to go ahead and keep it at the 44 cent level for the next several years really how quickly can you pay off this 8.19 million while still maintaining that 44 cent tax rate and so that's why this is showing the seven year term here there's lots of different scenarios that you could do kind of in between all of these but this shows really what's the quickest you could pay it based on these assumptions while keeping that 44 cent level for the entire term uh, with this one you i keep talking about those step downs in payment so with this one you have a step down in payment out in 2031 so if you had a scenario where you really weren't seeing assessed valuation growth, um, then what this could potentially do here is set you up for a scenario where you still had a need that you wanted to pursue, say in 2027, but you don't really have your debt service payment stepping down. So in order to really move forward with that, that would ultimately result in a, a tax rate impact potentially an increase in your tax rate in order to to do that so that's i would say the benefit to illustration c is certainly the, mo the most minimal interest cost but the trade-off is that you don't see that that step down in those annual payments until out there in 2031 so that that could just box you into a corner a little bit with your future flexibility for future projects beyond this 8.19. So, so really, it's we're just basically approving it just in case we want to do something. That's else. correct. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We want to type. We don't do that so, now before right, that yeah. that deadline. It's just a, you know, Correct. Something to help us out in case we need it. Exactly. And that gives us some options we're moving yeah, forward. Like not, how we want to structure it. That means yeah. it gives us options. No, yeah. No and like I said, normally in the past, what I've done is we've had this hearing, and basically we're adopting, we're going yeah. forward with that particular amount and moving forward with that. With that, I mean that amount for that project in mind. But this again is allowing us that flexibility. Yeah, if we need to, we're able to do it. Yeah. yeah, and so the likely scenario is that you would borrow something less than the eight point one nine million yet this year, and then next year you might borrow another chunk, but you've already approved this overall eight point one nine million. So say you bar you borrow four million this year and then you could come back next fall and borrow the remaining four point one nine million and you've already gotten the approval in place so you're not subject to that additional petition remonstrance that additional approval process 
because you've done this hearing before the July 1 date. I'm anxious to see what's going to happen in two years. You know, we talk about the sunset. Yeah. I have a feeling that that's not going to go away. I mean, yeah. That's my personal opinion. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but again, this Thank you. I want to ask this time again. This is for the benefit of new board members. Um, if Mr. Shanahan from TAP uh, Law would come forward and kind of give a brief overview of the resolutions that are before you this evening before we, we move to open up the 1028 additional appropriation hearing. Good evening, board members. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Francesco. Um, first, I'd like to introduce since it's kind of family night, <laughs> yeah, four year old daughter our first uh, board meeting. Uh, so I don't know if it's dissuading her from practicing. <laughs> um, she did ask that we don't have a picture taken after. <laughs> um, so tonight in your packet, there are three resolutions. Um, the first is what we call a 1028 project resolution. The 1028 refers to the House bill that started the process several years ago. Which is a common question of where that number comes from. Um, the second resolution is a bond resolution which authorizes um, the maximum parameters of the bonds. And then the third resolution is an appropriation resolution, which is an accounting procedure that gives you the authorization to actually spend the money once you actually have it in your account. Um, tonight's hearing sets forth the parameters of this proposed capital project. Um, um, I guess we'd call it like a next two or three years of programming. Um, in the past, what we've done is um, done an annual evaluation, but now we have a little bit of a track record. Um, we've looked at sizing up to up to three years to give us some more flexibility given legislative changes coming out of Indianapolis. It's similar to what we did in two, 2016 for the larger project. We authorized the maximum parameter amount of the bonds and then issued three tranches over three years. Um, it, it's a little more it's interest rate efficient and then it, it, um, si it sized the bond issuance with the actual expenditure schedule for how the projects are being implemented. Um, so tonight, the 1028 project resolution memorializes the parameters that Lindsay set forth in her in her uh, um, presentation with regards to maximum tax rates, maximum bar amounts, and then the bond resolution authorizes the, the full um, program, recognizing that we're going to be looking at it for over the next three years for the actual borrowing amount that you're going to um, enter into the market to receive, and then, like I said, the third resolution appropriates those dollars. I'm happy to answer any specific questions about the three resolutions but um, otherwise uh, you know I think that the appropriate measure would be to ask the public for any of their comments and then at the close of the hearing consider taking action on the three resolutions yeah we can uh, have something if we like we open a hearing then for the 1028 additional appropriation meeting any taxpayers anyone in the audience that have any comments questions pro or con you would like to Present. Any man from the board? Yeah. Have a hearing, then. Yeah. Hearing's closed. Yeah, I yeah, actually closed it. Yeah, the hearing. That being said, then, um, I'm looking for the following recommendations. Uh, number one, to adopt the appropriation resolution as presented to the board, uh, as well as adopt the 1028 project resolution and adopt the bond resolution. Again, it's presented. The board has heard Mr. Hunt's presentation along with Baker Tilly. Any questions, comments on Hunt's presentation? Seeing none, I wouldn't care. Motion to do pass. So moved. Thank you, Justin. Second? Second. Ethne, Amy, thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Next, we have the 505 consideration for recommendation of award to the Fort City School Corporation Virtual Environmental Project. Mr. Hunt and Mr. Walter. Mr. Walter. So this evening I asked uh, Mr. Walter to join us. Can uh, I interrupt you quick? Can we yes. get a picture of you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you getting a picture? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Next on the agenda this evening is the uh, <clears throat> wanted Mr. Walter to be able to speak. <clears throat> and kind of give an overview uh, when we talk about the virtual environment and the 
project that's associated with this virtual environment. So at this time, Mr. Walsh, I will. Good evening. Uh, yeah, thanks for giving me a second to just kind of explain. Uh, I won't go into the super crazy technical details of things, but uh, since 2016, we have had a virtual environment in place. Uh, we use one of the leading industry standards, VMware. Um, and what that's done for us is, uh, if you've ever taken a tour of the previous uh, Cook Building server room, we had about six racks worth of equipment. Um, we've taken almost about 45 to 50 servers and consolidated them down into three virtual uh, hosts. So we've taken six racks down to one single row of racks. Um, and that has helped us both in the aspect of heating and cooling, but also in the aspect of uh, energy consumption. Uh, we no longer have a mass, essentially, server farm of servers sitting in a room uh, pulling power and, and heat in, uh, in a room. So uh, what this is doing is, is this is replacing the current system that we have in place right now. Um, our previous servers were Dell ESXi hosts um, that powered everything. Um, and a uh, previous switch that kind of gave us all the networking things of, uh, of the system. Um, this actually takes everything and kind of consolidates it into one solid platform with some redundancy also uh, plugged into it as well. Um, it's got a, it keeps actually everything uh, separate from our network as well. So it has its own network component inside of itself. So it doesn't conflict with any of our regular network traffic that goes in and out of the buildings, any of those kind of issues. So. Um, but one of the things we ran into this last couple of years is the storage uh, that we use for that, all the, all the server storage and all the hosts have now become end of life and a sale. Um, so we, we are unable to get support directly through Dell anymore through these, uh, for these servers and for the uh, storage components of it. So uh, we're looking to move on to a uh, Cisco, Cisco Hyperflex system. Um, like I said, it's all kind of incorporated into one platform, um, allows us also for more expandability. Um, you've seen our other projects that we've had uh, over the last couple months with the cybersecurity projects that we're uh, pushing forward with, um, SMA, ICE, uh, Duo multi-factor authentication for, for staff cell phones and things like that moving forward in the fall. Um, this also allows us to uh, take those software components and be able to have some expandability in our current environment and be able to really um, power those projects moving forward as well as our camera project that we have coming up. Uh, or that we're in the process of right now, that's actually going to be through that as well. So um, this is really giving us some more um, horsepower in the back side of the house and uh, allows us to continue to consolidate on and, and continue to grow. Any questions? Can you also speak to the process in which you were able to receive quotes? Yeah, so these are a part of the state QPA process. So uh, this is the state bidding process that essentially the state goes out for bid on a multitude of different products uh, that anybody within the state is allowed to then go on to the state QPA, see who those vendors are, and then essentially look at the approved uh, bid prices. Um, you either, when you go through state QPA, it either has to be, of course, obviously, QPA price or better. Um, so those are the, um, when we went through the process, we looked, we contacted Cisco and said, okay, who, and looked on the state site, who are your contacted Cisco uh, state represent or state uh, sales, QPA sales, and uh, they gave us zones, CDW, NSI. Um, unfortunately, zones wouldn't give us a quote back because we weren't an existing customer. Um, CDW and NSI both gave us quotes back with uh, NSI giving us the better of the, of the two quotes. And I was able to review the, the quotes as submitted as well as the overall scope of the project and my recommendation this evening would be to award the project to Network Solutions for $229,873.80 so the work can be completed uh, and update our virtual environment. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Wallflower. The board's heard the proposal. I hear a motion for the pass. So moved. Second. That was me. I was first. She was second. Okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you passed it, You made a motion? Yeah. Right, Amy seconded it. Well, Thank sure. you. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Like. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, President Arnold, if I could, Mike, I want to thank you and Greg both for keeping us ahead of the game. Uh, when we start talking about cyber security and security, we go back to our domain safety. One of the threads within our strategic planning uh, process over the next three to five years is cyber security. Mike's going to be leading that. Of course, many of these things. Uh, 
that we are planning our, you know, the plane's in flight already, so we're not waiting to unveil a plan and then wait five years to do something. So I applaud these guys for having that sort of uh, foresight. Thank you, and for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, consideration for the recommendation to approve replacement condensing unit and evaporators for LaPorte uh, High School kitchen, walk-in freezers and coolers. Mr. Hans, once again. Yeah, again, President Earl, I had done something very similar to this, or Food Service has done something very similar to this at Indian Trail uh, at the last board meeting. So this evening, we're not here to replace the actual boxes as far as those coolers or the walk-in freezers are concerned. However, uh, because of those units being over 25 years old, uh, they've, they've reached their life, uh, the end of life, and, and it would be not cost effective for us to continue to come back and repair. Um, we do have the funding in which to go ahead and move forward with the replacement <coughs> of the units. As part of your board package this evening, you're going to see a letter from Cindy Vondra outlining uh, what is the scope of work. Um, you're also going to see the quotes from RMP, CNT, and All Chem Solutions, and also a tabulation score sheet summary. Um, again, going back to just as a reminder for the board, because this is the child nutrition, this is a federal program, there are certain things in which we have to follow. In this particular case here, we issued a uh, request for a proposal or an RFP uh, to receive quotes uh, for this particular project. Uh, and this evening, I'm, I'm asking the board, my recommendation is to approve RMP Restaurant Services Incorporated for the Fort High School Kitchen condensing units uh, and evaporators for the walk-in freezers and walk-in um, coolers in the amount of $124,995. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. The board's heard Mr. Hunt's proposal. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, have a motion to approve. <coughs> So moved. Thank you, Ryan. Second? Second. Thank you, Justin. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, next order of business uh, will be consideration for the recommendation for the approval of the Steppens associated with summer curriculum work program. Dr. Tannigal. All right, good evening once again. In front of you is a request that you would approve the district stipend rate for our summer curriculum work. This is something we do annually um, and haven't gone to the board for approval in the past, so we're just being a little bit more thorough to provide documentation for our state board of accounts. But this is uh, um, typical of us. Right now we have teachers working on curriculum maps. We have um, teachers working on our Project Lead the Way curriculum. There's new updated standards in the state of Indiana that were just approved recently. So uh, it's ongoing work. We appreciate our staff doing it. We're able to use some of our grant money to pay them a very small, measly stipend of $25 an hour, but they do it willingly and enthusiastically, and we appreciate that. Board Chair Dr. Tonegal's proposal. Do I hear a motion approved? Thank you, Jennifer. Second? Second. Thank you, Brian. Motion and second been made. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Next order of business is the uh, recommendation, consideration for the recommendation of the approval of kindergarten countdown grant transfer. Dr. Tiger, once again. Now, this was an oversight error um, in our record keeping. We noticed that our uh, 2022 um, preschool classrooms were not paid for from this grant that we get annually from the Healthcare, Fund of the Healthcare Foundation of Report through the United Way. And so we're just asking that we do a little bit of record keeping and we would appreciate the board's official ruling on this transfer. Um, those classrooms are going on right now and uh, we did make sure that the documentation was correct, the correct fund, fund numbers were put on the personnel sheet. So this is uh, going back and looking and just discovered it when we were doing the paperwork this year. Thank you, Dr. Tannigal. I provided all the details in your packet too. I mean, it's gold and more that you can read about. It. So well, they were paid. It just wasn't out of that account, which was another account. We're not going to like that. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. We just need the board's approval, for, I mean, as far as that transfer is concerned. Or not the transfer, yeah, no, it's basically, it's, you got to transfer the revenue. Mm -hmm. You proceeded as such. I would truly like to have a motion to pass. So moved. Thank you, Ryan. Second? Second. Thank you, Amy. Motion was made and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay. So, Thank you. Anything nay. Say nay. No. Six zero. No. Okay, we have nothing further in new business. Do we have any comments from the board? 
<clears throat> have a couple of real quick ones here. Oh, I'll try and keep this Justin, quick. Justin, Amy, got one? Justin. No, I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to working with the board and with our admin team and moving forward and taking some big strides here at LaPorte. I think we have the opportunity to be one of the best districts in, in the area, and I'm looking forward to us taking the steps to to keep pushing this toward that. Thank you. The best is the only correction. Anyone else? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, real quick, the, uh, the legislative committee for the uh, ISBA contacted me, or well, I contacted all the members last week. We are in the process of setting meeting dates for the legislative committee, which will be, as I talked to uh, Terry this afternoon, probably be the latter part of either like the last Friday in July, the first Friday in August, the dates we're looking at right now. And I'm suggesting, I've already talked to the, uh, our administration, some of the board members. I also had this committee with Dr. Thacker. I ran to Dr. Thacker Saturday. He asked for an email. If you have any suggestions or comments that you think we ought to consider at this meeting, I think we got a whole month. We don't have to worry about it until next month. I believe the meeting won't be before the next month. Ideas and so forth, bring them to me and let me know. But keep in mind, this is going to be a short session. They've done enough damage this long session. Short session, they're all going to want to get out of Dodge because it's an election year. So there won't be a lot of things going on now. So it'll be very, very critical details. And having said that, I want to encourage the board because you talk about bonding and the appropriation. I had to call Mr. Hunt last week because I'm not familiar with this stuff. You know, I'm not, and he loves talking about it. He does a great job explaining it, even down to my level. When you brought it down to my level, to understand what this, you know, additional appropriations and buying and general obligation bonds are. I think he would encourage you to call him. He'd love to have you come in and meet with him and explain to you if something comes up because I have to. I'm not beyond. I understand this, so I would suggest that you do that and, and, and talk to me anytime there's an issue comes up about financing and so forth. Get the comments to me or suggestions if you have any for the next legislative session, but keep in mind, it's going to be a short session, fast and quick, and they'll, they'll want to get out of there. I have three thank you cards from Amy's Donut Day, and I'll pass them around if you all want to take a look at them and, and see. It's very nice to the teachers from the school that sent us the Association notes in the, about the donuts that received. And an electronic video as well in my report. Did you see that? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The first, right as soon as it had happened, I believe. I'll, well, I'll resend it back out. You know, I'm, I'm so technology minded. You know, <laughs> send me a send me a movie in the mail. <laughs> so the thank you cards, and tonight make sure that you sign the paper. Don't run out without saying. If you sign nothing else, make sure you sign this blue one. Okay. You know. And I want to say, Terry, we're going to miss you. You won't make our next board meeting. You can come back. I'll be at the retreat. Huh? I'm going to come back for the retreat. Because I'll still be here. Okay. Well, you, you come back for the board meeting. Too. Okay. <laughs> what is okay. six hours among friends? You know. So we're going to miss you. And thank you for everything. You know, your reception and everything like that has been really great. And uh, having said that, I will entertain a motion to... Dismissed. So moved. Thank you, Ryan. Second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And then